this is the world's biggest Grave Digger radio controlled monster truck. And in this video, we're going to fit a great big racing engine and then take it out for a rip. <laughs> Make more cash so you can buy more toys, quit your job, or maybe buy your dream house. Then click on the link in the description, and I'll show you how many of my students make thousands of dollars every single month by selling simple items like this and this on eBay. In here, we have the world's biggest RC car, and it comes in two boxes. Oh my god, check out the size of this! So, this is a normal sized RC car tyre. This is a Grave Digger tyre! Check out the size difference! What? It's bigger than my head! Here we got a shock, and here it is, compared to a normal sized RC car shock. Look at the size of this axle, man! Normal sized RC car, Grave Digger axle! And now, for the big boy! So here it is, the Primal Grave Digger. We've got all the stickers here. This one is actually the limited edition, collector's edition. So it's 169 out of 200, and it comes with a special plaque here, signed by the man himself, the legendary Dennis Anderson. Being the collector's edition, it does come with a few upgrades. More on that later. So we're going to put it all together, and then we're going to take it out for a rip. But also, I've got a few more upgrades. So we've got a long wheelbase kit to make it longer. In here, check this out guys here we have the taylor rc 50 cc engine check this out guys this thing has got some horsepower and we have a servo upgrade so let's stop waffling get all this stuff fitted and then take it out for a rip so to start off with let's get the body off and then let's try and fit the engine so it's already got a 50 cc engine in there however they're not really that powerful they're great for a beginner but they are a little bit boggy and a little bit underwhelming so the taylor that is really going to wake this bad boy up so here i'm removing the four link bars because it makes it easier to get the engine out and we need to take them off anyway to fit the long wheelbase kit so to get the engine out we need to remove this cover take out some sprockets take these screws out here and then hope for the best Found more screws under here. Look, the engine is mounted to this cross beam here. We've still got the exhaust pipe holding it in, and also I think we're gonna have to remove this side plate. So now with the exhaust pipe off, all we need to do is disconnect the throttle cable, then the engine can come out. Here we go, Taylor 50cc engine time! So this here is the Taylor 50cc engine. If we have a look at my primal raminator down here, this one's got the 80cc version. Now this thing has got so much horsepower. Trouble is, it does chew up the transmission sometimes. Now Thunder RC, he's got exactly the same truck with the same engine. And that's the fastest I've ever seen one of these primal monster trucks go. He's got the high speed gearing in it too, so I'm going to do the same. And he's also got lighter clutch springs on there to make it all a little bit easier on the transmission mission so I've kind of copied the same setup. No idea how fast it's going to actually go but I've got a GPS here so we can check it. The Taylor kit also comes with everything that you need to mount this engine. Well I hope you do anyway but let's check out this tuned pipe. So before we fit the engine it's probably a good idea to fit the high speed gearing while it's easier to get to. So this is very similar to a real monster truck. So here's a real one that we built on this channel a little while ago and if you look in here look you can see the transfer case. You take that cover off and just the same on the raminator you can swap out the gears so we've got to pull these gears out and included with the kit comes this high speed gearing so if you put them in this way around that's going to give it the highest speed however if you flip them over that's going to give you like a crawling gear Also, you get medium speed gearing. That's what I've got in the ATCC Raminator. And I reckon with this and the high speed gearing, this is actually going to go a lot faster. Engine in time. But before that, we've got to take off a couple of brackets off the old engine and put them onto the new one.
Oh no! Tea everywhere! Oh! Here I'm fitting an extra engine mount that comes with the Taylor engine. So next up, let's get the actuals on, but before that, I just want to fit these new servos. So these are the 100 kilo servos from AGF. Here's the techno babble. They're all metal cased, all metal gears, some of the best quality servos that I've ever seen. Next, we've got to screw the servo arm back on. However, this is an M3 and the AGF servos have an M3.5. No big deal, but we just got to faff a little bit to get it to fit. Now, the AGF servo does come with a screw. However, it doesn't quite fit into here. So first, we've got to drill out the arm to a 3.5 millimeter hole, and then we've got to shave the head down a little bit too. And before we can fit the servo arms, we need to plug the servos in, make sure they're centred, then we can go ahead and fit the arms. The servo arms are on these adjuster things so you can sync both servos perfectly together so they're not fighting each other. Do you know what? This is actually a really nice radio. It's got model memories, endpoints, dual rates, expo, pretty much everything that you're going to want in a radio. Next up, long wheelbase conversion kit. And here I'm just putting a bit of blue Loctite into all the threads to stop it all from coming loose. Boom! So on the top links here, I'll put this bigger spacer on the outside. If you put it on the inside, I have bent the bolt before. Next, we've got to fit the rear axle. Boom! Now this truck here, I'm going to leave it with no rear steering for now. These two primal laminators here, I've both given them the rear steering conversion. However, sometimes if you're going fast and you're hitting bumps, the rear steering can kick out and it can make it really uncontrollable, make the truck roll over. Now you can tighten up the servo saver, but then you can kill servos like I've already killed loads. So this one, I want to be able to bash it a little bit harder, a little bit more confident in the rear end, so we're just going to leave it straight axle. On a real monster truck, we got rear wheel steering, but the hydraulics are so powerful, you don't really have a problem with the back wheels sort of kicking out. Next up, we've got to fit the shocks. Now, I need to make a few adjustments to these. The same adjustments that I made to those ruminators down there. I'm not going to bother filming it, because I've already filmed it a couple of times and put it on those two videos there. But basically, some of the primal monster trucks, they come with leaking shocks, or they might start leaking after a little while. So, if you get in contact with Primal, they will supply you with some of these new O-rings to stop the leaks. Alternatively, and this is the fix that I did to those two. I've got some of these O-rings here. The size is that there, R07. And there's all the sizes there, so you can just eBay that and put some of them in. I only put one of them in. I'll take the bottom cap off, pull the O-ring out, push that one in, job done. If you put the primal ones in, then you've got to pull the whole shaft out, do that O-ring, and you've also got to do the other O-ring on the inside. A little bit more work. Also, the stock shocks, if you're doing hard bashing, if you land really, really hard, the suspension locks up solid, and you can end up blowing out pistons, snapping off standoffs. So I'll just drill them out with a 3.5mm drill bit. If you're running single shocks in a 3.5 half mil drill bit is going to be way too soft it's going to bottom out and you're also going to be snapping off standoffs so i'm going to do all that and then we're going to bolt them on there we go all done next we have to fit them next we need to make a couple of adjustments so these shock standoffs here they're at the same level if you look at the axle this side here is higher than this one so if you want to utilize the full travel of your shocks you need to take this mount here and move it up to here Next up, we've got to take all this stuff off because you cannot get that bottom bolt through. You can't get it this way, also can't get it in that way. So even with this removed, you still cannot quite get that bolt in there. Now you can remove all of this, but that's a big hassle. I've got an easier way. 
five millimeter drill bit and just run it through at a slight angle. Put your goggles on, there's a good chance that drill bit's gonna shatter doing that. And now, we can put the shock in and slide the bolt through at a slight angle. I know some of you guys are gonna say, ah, it's a bodge, it's, you're not doing it right, but ah, I don't care, not in it, am I? Boom, and there we go, we've got this bar back in. If you look here, look, it is very close, but there is a slight gap there. You do want to put it back in because otherwise you might bend the chassis if you're doing big jumps. Right, rest of them. Boom! Next up we've got to fit the sway bars. Next up we've got to fit the disc brakes and the centre drive shafts. And brake calipers. So if you look here, look, I ground a little bit of that pin off there because it's rubbing on the brake disc. Next up, I've got to get the kill switch to work. So here's the original on-off switch. The Taylor engine has a button. In here is a kill switch that you can use from the remote. I'm guessing it's probably this button here. The wires for all that is going through here somewhere. I've got to figure out a way of wiring that into that. Also, this is a new receiver box. You've got the battery in there, all the radio gear, all the wires. Lovely, neat and tidy. One simple on-off switch. You can charge it up from on here. However, Ever, I like to run these raminators on a 2S LiPo. So I'm going to go back to the old school way of doing it. We've got one little receiver box and the battery goes there. I'm not going to bother filming the whole process because it's super fiddly and it's going to be really boring for you guys. I'm just going to shove it on and then show you what I've done afterwards. And when it comes to all this kill switch stuff, I have no idea what I'm doing. So it's going to be a big faff. <laughs> Alright, so I've been messing about with it for about an hour and I've got it all wired up now. So we got rid of this box, put this one on. Not quite as neat as the original one, but it's just easier if you want to run an external battery. I've taken off all the shielding off the wires, it just makes it a little bit easier to root it and work on it if anything goes wrong in the future. Got rid of that kill switch because it's already got one on the engine. Then the two wires that went to that switch, I just soldered them onto that switch there. So if any of you guys are wondering how to do it, that is how I did it. So on here, where the aerial hole used to be, I put a little bit of Lexan as a little inspection window. So when that light's green that means the engine can start so if you pull this pull starter you can see that sparking uh, you can if the lights are off anyway lights are on you can't so then you hit the kill switch on there lights off red lights blinking that means the engine's going to cut out and we can still turn it off with this button here so steering's all working so here's the brake servo and then down here we have the throttle servo this here is forward and reverse and there's that servo there next up we've got to fit the brake cables Boom! There we go, got them all on there. Now I've just burnt out the brake servo, so I replaced it with one of these servos that come from the steering. Next up, we've got to fit the air filter. However, if you look under here, the fuel tank's in the way. Can't quite get that filter on there. So remember this bar that we took off the top here? I was cut 20 millimeters off of that. Perfect spaces for the tank. <laughs> Next up, we've got to put some air filter oil onto the filter. And that just helps a little bit of catching the dust particles. Next up, we can get the tank back in. Next up, we've got to fit the exhaust. Oh my god, check that out guys, it only just fits on the bench, what a unit! So next up, to get this body to fit, we have to take out the driver. Because if you look in there, look, it hits on the exhaust and it's going to hit on the engine too. So to get this piece here out, you have to remove the whole Lexan body panels. I'm lazy. I know what you're thinking, Kev, how could you? I'm never gonna put that back in again, am I? Look at that, We've still got a cut more out. It's hitting on here now. Oh man, still got a cut more out. Gotta go now, surely. 
it's still catching just on that bit there, look. Oh, and I find somewhere else where it's catching, look. The shock's up there, look. So we've still got to come down that far on the body mount. Shocks are hitting up there on the cage. So me putting the shocks down was probably a bad idea. So I've got to put it back. I'm going to deal with that off camera. I'm not going to bore you guys with all these little details. I'll show you when it's all done. Then it'll be time to take it out for a whip. Yes. Right, there we go. Put the shocks back how it came out of the factory. Put the bar back up there again. Should have just left it, but I wasn't snow, was I? So I've left the rear set up how I left it. So that is giving me the extra suspension travel on the front we have slightly less travel. But that's the same as on a real monster truck anyway. On the front, we have 26 inches of travel. On the rear, 30 inches. So we just made it a little bit more realistic. Right, body, I've had to cut out even more. Let me show you. So here's all the stuff that I cut out of it. So this piece gone, this piece gone, this piece here gone. I've taken this bar off here. See, it's on that side there, and I had to move it over to that side. The exhaust pipe is still slightly rubbing here. So I'm have to find some sort of heat shielding or something to put there, otherwise we might hurt that beautiful body. All right, let's see if it fits. Boom! Check it out, guys. I can't wait to get the stickers on. I was going to get a professional to put these on. However, I'm impatient. Last time I tried to put some wrap onto something, this happened. Luckily, Primal RC have a video how to do it. You know what, guys? It's actually come out pretty good for a beginner. So first of all, we've got to take these screws out. Then next up, I've got some water with a little bit of dish soap in there. One little drop. This is not how to, by the way. This is just how I did it. So the idea of water is so that you can sort of chuck it on and then still slide it around afterwards. So we've got to position it where we want it. Next up, I've got a card, and now you've got to sort of scratch it along to get all the water out of it, I think. First off, you want to do this join along here. I'm going to squeeze the water out of that. Doing it wrong, you guys let me know in the comments. Probably am doing it wrong. So the idea here is that we just push all the water, what's in there, just push it right to the edge and push it all out. It's going to take a few goes, but we'll get there. So you look here, look, we've got to stretch it quite a lot. So I'm just going to heat it up and hopefully that will stretch enough to go in. If not, I'll just put a little slit in there and, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't quite want to go into the corner. I was going to put a little slit in there. You know what? That's not too bad. So a little slit there. But the rest of it, no bubbles. Lines up perfectly. Guys, I reckon I did quite a good job of that. Man, this thing just looks unreal. It just does not do it justice on camera. You just have to see it in real life. The realism of this thing is just on another level. So here we've got a real monster truck. I built this on this channel, by the way. If you haven't seen it, there's a full build series. It's got the same chassis that the proper grave digger uses. It's pretty much the same spec. It's got a few little minor changes. We've got the same shocks, same engine, same gearbox. I've got these custom axle housings on here to make it a little bit wider than a normal monster truck. But anyway, look at that. Double shocks, real one, double shocks, solid live axle but on both of them. We've got the four link suspension. It's just exactly the same as the real one. Center drive shaft, transfer case in the middle, just like on the real one. Bead lock wheels. So here we've got all the upgrades that the Collector's Edition has got over the standard version. So I'm just going to put a link down below so you can have a look through that in a bit more detail. Also, this is where I got the engine from, Taylor RC. And this is where I got the steering servos from. So there's going to be a link to all of that down below. So let's get some fuel in it and then go rip. So we've got it up to one litre of petrol, gasoline for you Americans. Next, we've got to put in some of this two-stroke oil because you guys just tell me off about me putting cheap stuff in. So we've got some proper stuff. Proper engine, proper oil. So we've got the 25 to one. So that's got to go there somewhere, isn't it? Octane boost, I've got no idea how much I'm supposed to put in. So I'm just going to just tip a bit in. Got a Tetra boost. Ooh. More power. Put the loveness in there. So next, let's get some fuel in there and see if it runs. Where on earth is that dribbling down from, man? Oh, I don't bloody know. Maybe you find it too quickly, I don't know. Radio on. So this engine, there's no float bowl. It's a little pumpy thingy jig. So I think all you've got to do is put it and hope for the best. But what we have to do is give it full choke. Green means it's going to start. Cool. All right, so we're going to put it. 
Once we get a little pop, choke off, hopefully it's gonna go. We can take a few to get the, get the fuel in. There's no pump, which is a new in. Oh, oh went quite easy actually. It's got automatic choke off when you give it a little blip on there. Broken. I was flat out on the power trying to get the front to come down again and landed on the power that kills them. You've got to treat him like a real monster truck. You can't have to real spinning crazy and then slam it down into like a dead stop. That happens. So let's fix it, then take it out, take it out for a proper whip. Whoops. To be continued. So next video we're gonna fix it, then take it out for a proper bash, jump it speed run it anything else you want to see let me know in the comments